All right, gang, in this video, we're going to take a look at a gnarly 3D scan. Generally, 3D scans come in with uh, tons and tons of polygons and terrible topology. That's like the flow of the divisions between polygons. So we're going to take a look at how to make sure that these scans are closed so that we can do Boolean operations on them and so they're easier to 3D print. Uh, all right, so I just went up to File and Import, the types of files that we're getting out of uh, Meshroom, which is the photogrammetry software I've been using, are OBJs. So I imported an OBJ. Now when you get into the folder with the OBJ, you'll see the OBJ file, also an MTL or material file, and some bitmaps as well. Uh, just make sure to only import the OBJ. If you try to import the material as well, it'll screw up, but it'll happen by itself. And I can demonstrate this because if I switch over into the render view here, which will take a second because this is a big file, we can see that the texture has been applied to the surface, but my orientation is all out of whack. So back to shaded mode, and I'll click here on the gumball to get us into these uh, parallel views. And now I can just hit G on the keyboard and start to straighten this guy out. You'll see that right now the origin point, which pops up in yellow, these are like floating um, vertices and stuff. This is the origin point. We want to suck that into the center, but we can't do that quite yet. So I'll hit R to rotate from these different views, and then G to get things in line, and we'll just have to kind of do this a couple times. The rotation always being a little weird because the center of rotation is in the wrong place. And now I'm going to rotate around. Let's make this bare kind of up and down in the standard view. Something like that. Okay, great. So now that I verify that I like kind of where this thing is at, and it just has to be close. Now I can go up to Object, Set Origin, and then Origin to 3D Cursor. So by default, the 3D Cursor is this um, red and white circle. That's going to be set to 0, 0, 0 in the, um, in the grid view. And so now uh, when I rotate stuff, it'll rotate around that center, which will be a little easier. So I can rotate and get things just right. Okay, now I'm going to hit Tab, or if I go up to Object Mode, I can switch to Edit. And everything's going to bog down a little bit because we have so many different vertices in here. And I'll deselect so I can kind of see what I'm doing. And I just see kind of the ghost of my bear right there. So let's use the Rectangular Selection tool. And let's also turn on X-Ray that's up here. Now, if you're anything like me and you're working on maybe a smaller screen or um, have uh, increased the, uh, the font size of all of these different menus, you may find that some of the stuff over here on the right is hidden because you have to actually scroll sideways to get it. Just FYI. Okay, so let's make as small of a rectangle as we can while we're still grabbing all of that geometry. And I think I want to make sure I have, you know, just a little bit of space around the ears and so forth, and that's looking pretty good. So now we'll go up to Select, and then I will Invert. And then I'm going to Delete and select Vertices. And so we'll get rid of all that extra stuff. So this is going to get easier and easier for the computer to handle now as we're just getting rid of all this extra math. OK, so I'm Shift selecting some of this stuff to get rid of it, hitting Delete, picking Vertices. And then if we switch back into Object Mode and look at this as a render, we can just verify that we're not starting to crop off accidental detail. So that's starting to look pretty good. Now you can see that uh, when I laid this thing down on the table, right, when I did the photogrammetry, I used a, uh, a dust jacket for a book. And I think I must have taken the book out because the dust jacket got kind of distorted, which is unfortunate because I'll have to kind of clip off mo more of my bear to get rid of that. Uh, so when you do this, hopefully you've just got your object on a flat surface or just sort of standing up in the air in the case maybe of a uh, 3D scan with a uh, piece of equipment. Okay, so I'll come in from the side, back to edit mode. We want to make sure that X-Ray is turned on, and then I'll come in here with the box select in my case, and I'll try to grab the minimum amount to get rid of that background there and to not delete as much of that bear as possible. What you may also notice here is we have different sizes on our faces. So here are some huge triangles and here are some little triangles, which unfortunately is going to mean that as we make this selection, we're going to creep up the side a little bit, but that, that can't really be helped. Okay, so we pick all those. Once again, we hit Delete and Vertices, and now we're starting to get a little closer to the actual model that we want to keep. Now, you notice when I did this, we popped some weird holes in this thing, right? So, for example, here you can see there's like a random vertex that's just hanging out by itself, so I would want to delete that. Uh, sometimes you'll also see there might be an edge. So if I go over to Edge Select 
and pick that naked edge, I can just get rid of that. But here I have to say delete edges as opposed to vertices. And we're going to look around and we're going to look for places where things get really jagged. So there's two ways to fix this. Uh, one of them would be to come in here and delete something that's popping out. The other way is going to be to fill something that's kind of popping in. So if I pick face selection mode, for example, and then I come down here to my facet and delete it, delete faces, I can do stuff like that. And I might also come in with edge selection mode and I can select more than one face and then hit F to fill. Um, you know, note that the computer is going to try to guess how the te texture map should be remapped onto these new faces, and sometimes it does all right, uh, but you'll see it gives some pretty funky results sometime. So that's the basic idea. Now, while it's possible to just have the computer select this whole big open, you know, hole back here and fill it, the results are always going to be kind of gnarly. So it's going to behoove you to come in here and do some of this cleaning by hand. So back to face mode. And I can pick all these little kind of shark teeth that are sticking out, you know, like that, and get rid of them. And I'll show you what we're working towards here. Uh, and then, you know, I might even take the same location uh, and then refill that like this. Uh, you can see that one did some weird stuff with the texture, but that's fine. We're making art here. Come on. Uh, okay, so if I want to select that edge, what I can do is double click on one of these edges and you'll get to see about how far that'll run before the computer gets confused. So we actually have a pretty good run all the way around here. Um, and it, it even picks up some stuff that I might want to fix up anyway, right? So for example, I probably want to pull out, you know, that point and some points over here. So we're going to go all the way around we're going to keep double clicking and every time that um, the computer stops that edge loop from going all the way around we're going to use that to identify a spot that needs some healing and so i'll just put this on fast forward and i'll just run through here and um, and skip to um, a copy of the model where i have this work all done already okay so i wave my magic wand and um, this was really just hand work you know going around through this thing and making sure that none of these edges are too crazy sawtooth looking uh, even as i look around i can see some more spots that i might choose to fix so here i'll grab my edge selection come around here while holding shift fill in that guy and so forth it's irritating that there's not an automated way to do this. Well, there is, but it'll cause you just as many problems. So it's, it's worth the 10 or 15 minutes it'll take just to go around and kind of fix this whole thing up. So now what I should be able to do is zoom in and double click, and then I zoom back out, and I should see that my selection, this edge loop, goes all the way around the back of this thing. And now all that's left to do is, um, it's either F or Alt F. Let's see how F does. So I hit F for fill. And then I have X-ray on, so I'll turn that off. And you can see that the back has been filled by this giant, many, many faceted face. So this is known as an N-gon. Uh, the N stands for the variable, which tells us how many, um, uh, how many facets will be on the edge of this thing. If I can, here I'll hit Control Z, uh, break this thing up into smaller facets. So I'm in edit mode. Let's go over to face. And then you can see here, fill is actually Alt F. So if I do that, that's going to give us more triangles on the back, uh, which there can sometimes be an advantage to not having just those giant uh, end guns. I also have beautify checked. I'm not really sure what that does. Oh yeah, it kind of like distributes those triangles a little bit better. Cool. So if we did our work right, that means that now this form is manifold. So it, it reads as having an interior and an exterior and there's no holes poked in it. And we can verify that by going to select, and then we say select by trait, and non-manifold is the type of selection. Uh, I should probably deselect first and then try that again. Select by trait, non-manifold, and then I look around, I'm not seeing any of my yellow selections, so that's looking great. Uh, if you do have something come up, then again, you would just sort of edit, edit it until you can select the entire edge loop that describes it, and you can use that to fill smaller holes. It's also possible you can try some of these automated tools. So if I go to Mesh and then I go to Cleanup, I'll have the opportunity, for example, to fill holes down here. So if you if you have a scan that comes in that's super gappy and is you know covered in tons of little teeny tiny holes, 
and you want to see how the computer does in an automated fashion, you can go ahead and give it a try. Although when I tried it with the bear, I got all these weird, like little, like it was like web feet. You know, I, I got these sort of planes shooting out in the armpit and the um, and the crotch and so forth, and it just wasn't working for me. So I had to go really clean those holes up uh, before I told them to fill. Now the other thing we can do to check how this is coming along in terms of being manifold is we can attempt a boolean, and we can also take a look at it from a 3D printing perspective. I'll show you that first. So I'll go to Edit and Preferences, and then down to Add-ons. And this is something we'll touch upon many times as we're talking about Blender. So there's a ton of potential add-ons that ship with Blender. They're just not checked, so you don't see them on a day-to-day -day basis. So this is one uh, that lots of people use. If I start typing in 3D, one of the ones I should get is Mesh colon 3D Print Toolbox. And you can see I've already got that checked. So by checking that, over here in this menu right here, I should have 3D Print on one of the tabs. And if that's not currently showing, you can just hit the, uh, the N key or tap on this little arrow right here. That one's kind of hidden. So 3D Print, I'll switch back to Object Mode and select my object. Oh, and you, you know, the, the other thing I'll mention before we do this, that, that's good, I almost forgot, is uh, if I go up here to this little arrow next to these two circles and look at my statistics, I can see that currently this model has about 140 point five thousand polygons, 140,000 polygons. And uh, that's not too bad, but as we start to work on the project we're doing for my class at Columbia College, you know, we may well get into hundreds of thousands and then millions of polygons, and eventually it's going to start to bog uh, Blender down. So right now I can get a sense, you know, just based on geometry, how refined that surface is. So let's take a look back in edit mode. I'm going to select all of these surfaces, and then I'll go to Mesh, Clean Up, and I'll go to Decimate. So what Decimate allows us to do is to take planes that are not really doing a ton of work, uh, facets I should say, so say two facets are right next to each other but they don't really change in angle, we can kind of combine those into one because it'll still do the same amount of visual work. So why don't we pull this ratio down. Maybe I'll be kind of aggressive, like to 0.25, and then I click out here and you can see that something changed. So if I deselect it, um, I don't know if you can really tell, but now all those facets are a little bit bigger. And if I go back into object mode, it's still looking pretty good. Now, if I scroll in, I'll start to see those facets show up a little bit, but it's still pretty lumpy and kind of does its job from a distance. And then if I add the texture, you just, you just really can't tell, right? Um, but now we're only working with 35,000 triangles. So that's going to be easier on the computer and just make your sort of experience in Blender more positive. If you try to do this in other places, like with the decimate modifier, you're going to lose the connection to the UV map and then the texture will no longer be mapped over the surface. So we're going to try to try to avoid that approach. Okay, so a little detour there. So we were going to check this object. It's been decimated. It's been filled. So I'll say check all. This will go a lot faster with fewer triangles. And you can see the most important thing up here is non-manifold edges is zero. So that's fantastic. There's some other stuff down here in terms of um, non-flat faces, zero edges, and so forth. And these can cause some problems in 3D printing on occasion, but the main thing is this manifold stuff. If you want, you can also go down here and, you know, just like click on make manifold, and then it'll tell you down here at the bottom, see it, it modified vertices, edges, and faces. And then if I check all again, we should see these numbers shift a little bit. So now my zero edges um, went to zero from 17. And so it's, it's good to get rid of these things where you can, but um, the real test here will be a Boolean operation. So, so this thing right by itself should be printable, and now what we can also do is start to have it interact with other kinds of closed geometry. So I'll say Shift A, and I'm going to add a mesh of some kind. Let's just start with an icosphere. And I'll take my icosphere and I'll just sort of crash it into my bear in a way that'll make an interesting intersection. We know that the icosphere is closed because, you know, it's brand new and we haven't changed anything about it. And we're about to find out if the bear is closed. So I'll select the bear and I'll come over here onto this side and look for this little wrench tab. That's where the modifiers are. And we'll add a modifier for Boolean operations. Okay, so we've already selected the bear, so the modifier is attached to the bear. And then we want to use this eyedropper to select the object that's going to interact. And we're doing a difference type. We could also do intersection or union. So difference type is like a subtraction, I eyedropper this little guy, and you might have seen if you were watching carefully that line change slightly. So watch what happens if I hide the icosphere. 
Now I get this bizarre sort of chunk that was taken out of my bear. And the only reason that this works is because we went through the task of making sure uh, that everything was solid. And in fact, because this is live, I can take my icosphere and I can move it around, right? And then hide it again. And it should, oh, interesting, it didn't update. So I wonder, so here's my textured mesh. So it could be that it's like I put it on a, a weird spot or something. And let's move back over to here. Uh, it might have just been too low. So I'll grab it and move it up in Z. And then let's see what happens if I hide it right. Right, so there it's taking a chunk out of my model again. Uh, cool, so now what you're gonna be able to do is take all these meshes and kind of bring them in and make sure they're all solid and then start crashing them into each other to see what kind of bizarro John Carpenter's the thing alien animal that we can make.